This video, along with the printed owner's manual, gives you step-by-step -step instruction for the installation of your Tier 1 iron, manganese, and hydrogen sulfide air induction oxidation system. Before starting your installation, it's important to note the following information. Do not use a system with water that is unsafe or of unknown quality. If your water pressure exceeds 125 PSI, install a pressure reducing valve. If the water pressure is under 30 PSI, install a booster pump before the water inlet. The system operating temperature is between 40 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not use the unit on hot water supplies. Do not install the unit where it may be exposed to wet weather, direct sunlight, or temperature outside the operating temperature range. Outside faucets used to water lawns and gardens should not supply treated water. To supply them with untreated water, you may need a new water line connected to them. We recommend inspecting and servicing the control valve annually. It may be necessary to clean or replace the piston, seals, or spacers. All plumbing and electrical work should be performed by an accredited professional to ensure you meet all state and local guidelines. You must have a copy of your water test results. It is important that this product not be installed until you have this information. To begin, check that the system will fit in the location selected. Turn off the water source at the inlet to your home. Open the box, lay out all the system components, double checking to make sure you have everything. Before starting the installation, there are a couple things you need to do. If you will be draining the water heater tank, shut off its power supply. To release the pressure on your water system and drain your pipes, open the faucet on the highest and lowest levels in your home. During the installation, be sure to hand tighten all the plastic connections to prevent irreversible damage to the connector threads. Teflon tape may be used on the connections that do not use an O-ring seal. To maintain full valve flow, 3 quarter inch or 1 inch pipes to and from the filter fittings are recommended. You should maintain the same or larger pipe size as the water supply pipe to the filter inlet. To begin the install, verify that the control valve is installed securely on the media tank. Make sure the bypass is well attached to the control valve. Make sure both brass and plastic nuts are tightened well. There are seven red clips. Please check to make sure you have all of them. Locate the air check assembly. Locate the brine line quick connect fitting on the control valve. Ensure that the brass and plastic nuts are tightly connected to the air check assembly. Pull the blue C-clip from the connection. Insert the end of the air check assembly into the fitting. Pull back on the air check assembly to lock it, then reattach the blue C-clip to secure it. Choose the appropriate adapters for your plumbing, either a 3 quarter inch elbow or 1 inch straight fittings. Shine up the O-rings on the adapters with the silicone lubricant. Remove the red locking clips from the bypass. Connect the inlet and outlet connectors to the bypass. Make sure to push the connectors fully into the fittings until the straight line on the top of the connector is flush with the fittings as shown. Then reinsert the red plastic clips to secure them. Next, connect the inlet and outlet of the filter to your home's plumbing. There are raised arrows on the bypass assembly indicating the direction of the water flow. You may use Teflon tape for a tight seal, but do not use pipe thread compound as it may attack the material on the valve body. Now you need to make your final valve connections. The control valve connections are 3 quarter inch NPT male threads. If you are unsure of the proper connector for your home's plumbing, please review the recommended video on the pipe fitting connections. Be careful when threading your connections. If you cross thread the connections while using a metal fitting, you can damage the plastic threading, making it difficult to complete the secure connection. We recommend using flex connectors as shown as they are less likely to have cross threading issues and also allow for size adjustments for your plumbing system. 
Once the pipe fittings have been attached to the inlet and outlet, your system is ready to be piped into your home's plumbing. If you don't feel comfortable making the connections to your home plumbing, please consult a contractor or installation professional. Please consult your local plumbing codes about requirements for use of a check valve or backflow prevention. Outside faucets used to water lawns and gardens should not supply treated water. This may also require the installation of a check valve and a new water line connection. Please refer to your owner's manual for more information. Please note that you may need to use additional adapters to install a check valve depending on your plumbing. Locate and install the 3 quarter inch check valve on the bypass valve inlet. The check valve needs to be installed at the highest possible level of the plumbing line to avoid air trap. The water flow directional arrow on the check valve should point toward the filter. Verify that the drain hose barb is attached to the drain port in the control valve with a red clip. Attach the drain hose to the hose barb and tighten securely with a hose clamp. Run the drain line to a floor drain or a laundry drain. Never insert the drain line directly into a drain, sewer line, or trap. You must allow an air gap between the drain line and the wastewater to prevent the possibility of sewage being back siphoned into the filter. Before operating your filter for the first time, you should flush out your home's water lines and filter bypass. Using the included Allen key, place the unit in the bypass position by turning the knobs towards the center. Next, slowly turn on the main water supply. At the nearest treated cold water tap, remove the faucet screen, open the faucet, and let the water run a few minutes until the system is free of any air or foreign material resulting from the plumbing work. Make sure there are no leaks in the plumbing system before proceeding. Close the water tap when the water runs clear, then return the bypass to the open position. Once the system flushing has completed, you're ready to plug in your control valve to start programming. Attach the power cord to the control valve and plug it in. Refer to your manual or the recommended video for detailed programming instructions. Your water filter should now be fully operational. If you have any further questions about the installation of your system, please reference the instructions included with your system, visit our website, or contact our U.S.-based technical support. We're here to help.